Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to episode three of Let's Talk. And uh, today we're going to be talking about repetition and reputation. And then we actually got a question from you said viewer out there, which we appreciate. So we're going to get into that, but we were, we were tired after a long day. I'm sure you're a lot more tired than me. Yeah, very much. <laughs> so uh, what, it, what did you do? What, run, run with the people down what you did today. Because I, I, they got to hear it, too. Uh, I guess. Um, I worked. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so th that's the overall. We are right now. Um, we technically had a snowstorm. It's. Uh, it didn't turn out to be a snowstorm, but regardless, it's pretty crappy weather. It's rainy. It's cold. It's wet. It's oh icy. God, it's, is it snowing right now? Um, I think right now it's like a mix, like a sleeting, icy mix. I hate um, that. You ever you ever skid on that? But you probably like skidding on that stuff. As long as I'm in control of the skid, yes. Yes, that's like the best part. Um, the control. If it's out of my control, then no. I, I've had some close calls that scared me. What did they tell you to do? Did they tell you to glide or did they tell you to drift? Depends on the type of car. So you got a Jeep, and your Jeep is a, like a cardboard box to some vehicles. Yes, it's a cardboard <laughs> box, a little ice cube. Um, it's rear wheel drive until engaged into 4x4. Four four. So. If I was turning into a turn, let's assume I'm turning like this, to the right, banking to the right, uh, and I started sliding into the bank like I'm drifting. Ugh. Um, the last thing you would want to do, because most likely what caused that drift is you giving the car gas and it's starting to fishtail, so the back end's going to move to the left when you're turning to the right. First thing you want to do is let go of the gas. So what's going to happen is. Oh, this Obviously, is a step by step. This is a step by step. So, if I'm going straight and I'm turning right, so that means these are my back tires here. If you can't see it, um, it's kind of hard to explain this, but basically, <laughs> he's just having his hands up. For yeah. The audio okay. So, <laughs> you take your right. You're sliding to the right more than you want to. Your back wheels are here. Um, you let go of the gas. Instinctively, your body's going to want to turn left anyway because that's the direction you want to go. So as you're doing that, you let go of the gas, your front wheels are gonna actually gain more traction and slowly pull you forward. Now, that's if you get traction on your front wheels. If you don't, then there's a few other things you could try. You could try throttling the gas just ever so slightly, just to give you enough push forward. That way you could get the front wheels to gain a little bit of traction to where it could finally glide oh, itself that's one forward. Idea. Um, and like I said, it really depends on your car. If you're front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, four by four, rear wheel drive, um, it's the hardest. Uh, <laughs> which is why they use it for drifting because they, they slide. Four by four, you probably won't be sliding anyway because the front wheels will pull it. And front wheel drive, if you are sliding like that, you could simply just give it gas actually, how the and heck then do it'll pull the back tires straight. How, how do you like get that? Did you like how many times until you had to like get that drift right? Like, do you drift on like occasional? When I'm bored. When you're bored? And it's snowing. I can't do that from the life of me. Like, I'll sit there, like, in my SUV, and I'll look and I'll be like, I wonder what would happen if I tried to make a donut. <laughs> I feel mm -hmm. like the SUV won't won't survive. I don't think the tires would survive. Well, believe it or not, what you think it looks like on the outside, <clears throat> excuse me, does not look like that. Eh. Um, those times where I was doing a donut, and I was like, wow, I'm going crazy like my car is like the front wheels are standing here and then i'm just doing circles around it like a perfect donut right um and then i see it from the third person because either someone videoed me or something and uh it's really just me going <laughs> like yeah the back tires are on the outside but i'm thinking i'm like perfectly straight and i'm really just kind of doing this oh man <laughs> and, you're uh, going yeah. over the top yeah so for it to look really cool you actually have to be like in an uncomfortable zone um which is what drifting tends to turn into and it's a fear when did you, you get good at drifting i did not get good at drifting. no one gets good at drifting no no i'm just saying i'm not a drifter i wish uh, i was um i just know how to control a vehicle and i wish i had a drift car um fortunately uh you know i don't have the money to buy one yet because i already have too many other cars but um we're all on that boat with Affording things. Yeah, we affording we things feel is that. sometimes. So uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully one day, you know, I, I would love to get into it. I, I know a bunch of people that do it and uh, places to go. What? What's your story on saving? Saving? Yeah, like saving. 
Like, just like, how do you build up um, money so easily? Personally? Yeah. Like, what's what's your what's what do you do for that? Like, how do you build that step by step or whatever? Well, I know most people count everything. Like, uh, any purchase they'll subtract it from their bank account, or they'll keep like a, a nice log and subtract it that way. Yeah. Um, I actually don't do it that way. Mainly because I feel like I'm gonna drive myself crazy. I'm pretty um, fixated on numbers in my own head normally. That the last thing I want to do is cram extras in if I find it unnecessary. Now, obviously, if this was totally necessary where I have to count every dollar, then yes, I would. Um, I'm saying that it's not necessary because I'm not at that point where I would need to. But, yeah, um, I, yeah, I can understand that. <laughs> otherwise, I actually um, I do count what I spend. But I don't subtract it from my bank account. Ooh, interesting. It's like you so, don't you don't worry about what's there. It's just like whatever comes out. What I do is every paycheck, I do check my balance. I check my balance, and that's normally imprinted in my head because I think if you just had one source of revenue, right, one one money stash, you you're, you're going to want to know it anyway because you're going to do something or go out somewhere, and you're going to be like, okay, this is how much money I have, and this is how much I should spend and how much I shouldn't, right? Just as a natural internal memory thing yeah so let's just say this is hypothetical this is not how much i have um let's just say uh simple number you have five thousand dollars right so in between one and ten thousand you just have five thousand dollars i knew that at the beginning of the week i got paid that so i have five thousand anything that i buy throughout the week i'll count it in my head roughly so uh eight dollars on lunch here twenty dollars in gas here um I, I went or monthly you count it all up weekly in my oh, head okay because i get weekly. paid weekly too so I, I do the math in my head got you well, that's smart so yeah. boom 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 let's just say on average i will spend 12 dollars on lunch every day for five days i do that math take the sum subtract that from the five thousand in my head roughly like roughly roughly like not to the dollar not to the even tenth just <laughs> in the area right and then i would know okay this is how much i have to spend on bills this is how much I have to do on this and that and that and and how much I need to spend on this even if I know I didn't spend it yet this might be a few weeks ahead of time just so I know I have coverage for that yeah so I'll do that and then from there I will know what is considered my um play money oh, which could yeah, be considered yeah. yeah the things you would separate yeah it, it, that could be for anything or for saving so depending on my week, depending on the time of year, scenarios, whatever you want to call it, I would um, I'll use that play money and I'll either save it or I would spend it. And, and when I spend it, I'm not spending it foolishly on stuff that's like, wow, this is totally stupid. What, what are you going to get out of that? You know, so it's everything I try to buy is, is either an investment or something that's actually I'm going to keep it and pe I have something to show for it. Yeah. Basically. So it's like, okay, I got to fix my car. Well, that's part of my play money because that's not a part of my fixated budget for the week or the month. I need to fix it, but I consider that an extra uh, thing because technically I might be able to push it, but I'm going to do it now. You ever play too hard with your money? <laughs> that's I what do, I was gonna, that's I, why I laughed. I was like, oh. The, the way I play too hard with my money is only if I know I have a lot of money or what I would consider more than I need. Um,. Or I know that there's a lot coming to me. Yeah. Um, but that has to be guaranteed, or else I won't spend because I'll be afraid of, uh, you know, going negative or, or going backwards, and I don't want to do that. I at least want to break even. So. Do, you, do you build that, like, muscle memory in your head, like, when it comes to, like, uh, oh, my God, just saving money? You just build that muscle memory of, like, what you go through in your head? Do you have to, like, get used to doing that all the time? Like, all right, God, I got to constantly do this. I got to constantly check how much I got. It's almost... Um, it's almost become normal it's it's almost normal it's almost uh programmed in my brain because i had to find a way to just live normal life in that sense so it's yeah. like it worked it still does work it might not work forever i don't guarantee that it would work forever but at the moment it does and um i'm rolling with it and it's it's mainly because it's repetitive and it's also very uh it, it just works how the heck do you do that with your forms in karate, though? Repetition. Same way. Yeah, same way. 
How many? Fo- how, like, but but how do you? Uh, you hit the hammer on the. You hit the you nail in the coffin with You're that. Like, that's, oh, I did there, right? Yeah, the transition. That's why. <laughs> and and thus concluding into the second. So basically, um, those real life situations, what you heard, like those weren't stage. Those were real life scenarios. He's explained. So look, basically. You didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know. I just I just thought I'd ask. I didn't know how I was gonna bring repetition into this. I was just like, so. How is this in your life going? <laughs> like, well, it just, it was, it truly is repetition. Yeah, so. it's, if you have, look at, there's 65 patterns or something in Kusan Kun. The way I do it is I practice five and I restart. I practice five and I restart. I practice five and I restart. That's like usually in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then usually like as I do the practice five, I add five more and then I restart again. I practice five and then five more and then I do it again and so on and so forth to the point where I've done the form so many times in one day where it becomes a natural thing to me. Mm-hmm. Just so like it, it now sometimes it'll it'll hit me a lot worse than others. I'll sit there for um, I think Kusan Kun took me about uh, three weeks to learn. It was three weeks to learn because you know eventually you don't get you don't like when you're when you're when you're in high school and you're not really worrying about any other sports or anything or like anything else in the world but karate you kind of get a lot of time in you can do really whatever you want if you only focus on karate but then like when work mm-hmm. comes in you get older jobs all that build stuff yep. of course things aren't going to get in the way but it's a build of repetition like if I'm watching an ad on YouTube that's like a minute long and I can't skip it I'm like alright I might as well practice something or if it's like hey if I'm waiting my game to load like uh, GTA and that game takes years to load the people that understand that understand that mm-hmm. um, it'll uh, perfect time the game honestly it takes like nine minutes just to load it, just the game in so it's perfect time to practice like a nine minute workout right there or any time i wouldn't say wait in traffic don't get out on the highway and practice your forms on the highway that's not a good <laughs> idea <laughs> it'll be a sight to see though you might be on the news but <laughs> they, they go, um... <laughs> I get, oh man this red light on 80 uh, you're uh, stuck on traffic on 84 in waterbury so you get out oh perfect you're doing chops in the middle of the highway somebody's yelling at you hey what are you doing practicing sir nope can't have that sorry Free time, man. Anyway, <laughs> repetitions there when you have it. I think you get better that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I think honestly, just. I mean, there's not really much I can say about that. I mean, like, what do you have to say about it? Like the repetition. About rep- repetition. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, so repetition. Well, honestly, it's necessary for most people when it comes to learning. Um, I find that the only way I'm able to learn almost anything is by being repetitive or repetition in itself. So um, I have – well, I'm going to have to go on, like, a little bit of a side quest here. A just side to, quest? Uh, <laughs> just to explain <laughs> well, why. we upgrading? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so to explain why um, repetition works for me, at least, because um, maybe others are the same way. I have uh, picture memory, so... Good for you. Ugh. It, it's nice. It's also bad because I can't read something and retain it. I have to see it as well. Um, both together, great. One or the other, well, picture okay. Reading, no, I'm sorry. It just doesn't work for me. But um, once again, repetition comes into play there as well because if I can't see it over and over... Or if I can't practice it over and over because I'm seeing myself do it or feeling oh, like the muscle said, like memory, the memory part, okay, you're, I oh. yeah. So if I can't do hmm. it, then I can't retain it. If I can't see it, I can't retain it. I could read it and understand it, but doesn't mean I know it. If someone was telling you to do a, um, I think after like knowing, I think physically do. This is my opinion mm-hmm. in, in my experience. I think absolutely after constantly physically doing the repetition. And then someone calls me over the phone and says, "Hey man, so when I take my left hand and I move it to the and I move it to the side, blocking that wrist with my pinky, like as they're describing it, I can hear it. First off, you gotta have someone with a good yeah. description as you, the way to describe it. I feel like I'll know what they're doing, but in a sense of like, but you already know the move. Yeah, I know the move. It's just like, <laughs> here's my quest. Every time, you know what? I take that part back because there's parts where I'll like students come up to me, be like, "Oh, Mr. Massey, I have a question. Uh, there's this th- there's this part in the form that I'm learning, and I say." show it to me and i have to say that all the time because if i don't know what they're talking about if mm-hmm. i don't see it then i won't know so yeah that's exactly. the one, yeah i get it that's like imagine someone was to explain this is a really big hypothetical so um let's just say you're learning algebra right and they instead of Math. showing you the the x's with the parentheses and the 
and the, the division line with this number here, this number there. Imagine they put that into words without showing you in the picture. Or, or they explain it to you. You know, like, X is next to this, 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 and this. Are you going to picture the same thing that it really is? That's the question. So, wait, it's X2, and then there's a Y, A, and then there's, like, no symbols. Yeah, imagine instead of showing you a picture of it, they, they worded it to you. Like, they said it to you. Oh. Can you picture the same thing in the head that they actually mean? No. But I then, can't. Yeah, so, for example, <laughs> yeah. So when I, and I was actually talking to a few people about picture memory recently because um, we're just talking about remembering things. I remember things as literally a picture. So if um, if David right here was to tell me something right now that I didn't know and he said, remember that, when I do remember it and he says, hey, do you remember what I said? I'm going to picture me looking at him right now in the same position as we are and then that's going to be the only way I'm going to remember what he said because I can visualize when he said it to me. If he doesn't do it that way, if he says it over the phone or any other way, I will probably not. The gator ate my leg. Remember that, okay? The gator ate my leg. Wait, wait, wait <laughs> now look at you. Do, do it again. The gator ate my leg. Okay, see, I will probably remember that because I... <laughs> Because I saw his face when he did it, and it was—I uh, I don't think it's going to be hard to forget that. I, just, so, I don't think you'll forget the gator ate, ate my, my leg. leg. Yeah, um, no, no gator actually ate my leg. That was a—that was a joke. If you actually—if you pull that up in the next podcast or something randomly, that'd be kind of funny. But <laughs> moving on. Yeah, I'll charge so, that back for a little bit. So yeah, repetition. I, I think it's important, and if we're talking about it in a martial arts way. Uh, a lot of forms require repetition. Uh, when I was first learning any type of form from white belt all the way up to current, I would prefer to do each form twice in a row because the first time is getting like just the motions of the form, getting used to the moves. Second, when you're trying to retain something, you're trying to retain either a detail or you're trying to actually learn the form. Yeah. Even if I already know the form, I would like to do it twice. Doing it once is good just to make sure you can do it, but the second one is always better. In my opinion. So wait, how many times do you do it? I like to do at least two, at if least? not three. So um, I'm just going to pick a number because every different style is different. Let's just say we take uh, our form five, right? Okay, that's a good one. Our fifth form. Um, I would like to do that one twice. I've done that for years, and I feel like twice is good enough to, you know, take the rust off the joints for the first time and then and the second time is like okay now let me do it the way i would if i'm already used to it like um i, I already warmed up okay if you want to put it into that words that's just on how you would do it yeah that's how i would do it now if i'm learning a form I, I could do it for an hour i could do one form for an hour if i really wanted to to get every single detail but once i already know the form and i already know the details just to make sure i can do it still and do it correctly and maybe tighten up a few things here and there Maybe twice. I think it's cool if um, you know what makes a good uh, someone to practice good like good repetition in the martial arts world. You need a good. You need someone that can describe it just as well, though. That's the other thing. Mm -hmm. I, I hate to ex I hate to say it, but it's just <laughs> there's there's plenty of times where I could not do anything because of the way it was something not just in the martial arts world, but like in the in the real world, man. Yeah. People would look at me and be like, explain this thesaurus. Th Thesaurus. Thank you. Description to me. And I would sit there and I'll be like, yeah, those are words. So I need your physical help. Like, what am I doing wrong? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, And it, they're like, oh, you did not hear what I said? One perfect, perfect example. I wanted to be really good at this low voltage job. I really wanted to be good at it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and I love tech, electronics. I'm for it. This is new. I'm learning new, new things. And I asked the guy if I could record him while he's like doing this whole wall unit thing. And he's like, and he says, no, I'm going to. I'm not, and I don't want you to record it. I, I'm going to tell you once, and that, that's just going to be the end of it. And I said, I, I was, I was sh I'm not even joking. I, I was shocked. I looked at him, and I just said, no, this will help me just to keep the knowledge that I need. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I need that. And he's like, no, no, I just, no, you don't need that. We're here. We're here. I can tell you as many times. You don't need to record it. And I'm like, yes, I do. 
Because maybe at 3 a.m. if I wake up in the morning, I'm not going to call you and be like, hey, what did I have to do it again? <laughs> I yeah, want to look at it. just to review it in your head. Like a form. Like if I'm doing a form, like Kusan Kun, and if I say like, for example, like what we talked about, like uh, humility, when we were failing at that, when we messed up at that tournament, wow, what could I do to get better at that? Yeah. Maybe I better go record myself filming me doing this form, see that I completely botched the part where I got that bad grit, bad score. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should fix that and then hunt the repetition. So, you know, I'm just yeah. saying, there's ways to make it work. going to create the, uh, the perfection, because perfect doesn't really exist, but no, yeah. as close to perfect as possible, repetition will help achieve it. Yeah, no one, yeah, perfection is its own, its own thing that it can't be really reached. Oh, there's, um, we, I don't know, uh, you have a 10th degree, right? In my federation? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I just never met anybody that was a 10th degree. That's cool. Uh, oh, wait, did he pass away? Yes. Yeah, God bless. Well, that was the only person that we know. God bless Well, him. that I know, per se, I should say. Um, there will soon be more 10th degrees. I think the highest that I know personally now is at 8. How do you... Like, to just practice to 10th, and then it's like, that's a big deal. Like, you know how, like, high stand, like, like on the, I, I don't mean to be that guy, but it's like, it's like a, a pedestal kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't mean to sound like that, but it's just like, you got a lot on you. It's like, it's like, it's like Superman kind of, kind of, it kind of, like, imagine, like, Superman, you're like, kind of like the head honcho of the thing. And it's like, you got a lot running on, running on this thing. Yes. So like you got to make sure you're, you're setting the right values and the right moral here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like. I mean, anywhere, not just karate, but let's talk about like, okay. Um, have you ever went to a, have you ever went, and this, you know what, this is a perfect, perfect opportunity. Let's be a be real right here. Ready? Check this okay. out. <laughs> okay, no, but seriously, you walk into a store, you have, uh, you have, you talk to a customer and, or you talk to a customer, you walk into a store and you talk to a worker. The worker looks at you, just kind of gives you a little smug look. You don't, you don't really you don't really get its attention. All you do is just you're just trying to get some assistance, whatever you do. They notice you, but they don't even want to acknowledge you. They just kind of do their own thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you're just trying to get your cup of coffee served or you're just trying to get your donut or whatever, whatever, right? So then they finally make their way over to you and they give you the smuggiest like conversation. They don't mm -hmm. even want to be acknowledging you. They just don't even want they don't even want to be there. And then afterwards they get your call. You're trying to be nice, have a good day, whatever, and they just give you the biggest lack of disrespect. And then you sit there and you're like, "Wow." I don't think I like that experience. And then watch, you and your girl go down to the, uh, go to uh, go to uh, Dunkin' Donuts or Cumberland, wherever, just saying names, and they're not bad, I'm just using a name. And you go, oh, I don't wanna go there because I remember that last time. You know what I'm saying, that reputation? Like, yeah. it's like, I don't wanna go there, they, they, they're not good to me. I don't wanna go there, they're not good to me. Karate school, I don't wanna go there, they weren't really respectful. I don't wanna go to that show, I don't think they knew what they were doing, they kept falling a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Everything has a reputation. I, oh, why? Like, why? Why is? Why is he this? Why is she that? You know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think um, the higher you go in your life, and the more you do, the more I think you'll get recognized, and I think that's a big deal. I think, I think it's it, it's 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 oh my gosh! And, and it was a, it was in a video game. It said Detroit become human. Remember that game? Detroit where the androids are like yeah. become break and become have emotion. Mm -hmm. Well. The character in this game, the AI, he broke out and actually discovered emotion and traveled it to all other AI robots, and then they ended up becoming emotional and like discovered these feelings. They go up to the guy, and they're like they're like worshiping him at this point, like like the like the hero, the idol, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So one of the AIs walk up to him, and I think the guy's name was Isaac, and I, I could be wrong, but Isaac goes, you know, I brought all these people here. It, it's kind of. Uh, to have all that power, it's so dangerous. And I'm like sitting there, I'm like looking, I'm like, yeah, that's true. Like you got, you got like this placement. Like watch, for example, you're a black, you're a master belt, bro. Mm -hmm. Hear me out. You you tell someone to say something, to do something, they'll do it. You're in class. Will you hey, come here. They walk up right up to you. There's no questions. They just walk right up to you. Hey, get out of my class. Okay, boom. You can either. You can either make a situation good or make a situation bad. You can make a situation anything you want it to be because of that reputation, place of power, stuff like that, which I think, like, to hold such a title, that stuff is, like, it's important. Like, think about it. Imagine, let's talk pops off. Imagine Cosmeto pops off. Nasty. Hopefully, 
Yeah, appreciate it, appreciate it. Imagine nasty habits pops off. Mm -hmm. All right? Which you guys should go follow down in the description. There's like these things that people are going to look at and be like, oh, I know him from there. I know him from there. I know him from them. And then guess what? They're gonna, there's going to be people that are not going to acknowledge that they watch our show, but they might see us. And they could either watch us have a good moment with, a, with somebody or they can or just catch one. in the corner us having a really bad day. And that's why repetition, reputation, I think, is so important because you got to be careful on who's – you don't know who's watching. You don't know who's going to go back and be like, oh, well, look what I dug up, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's – got to be careful. It's a place of power. How do you – like, as a master, as a master, I'm asking, like, how do you manage that type of, like, acknowledgement? And especially as a friend and what you're growing here, all around you. You got people that came up to you and saying, I'm not sick, or I don't feel when I'm sick. <laughs> Which is true. Very true. Yeah. Uh, I already had a few people mention that, and it was very uh, random. <laughs> but I'm glad that people are actually watching at least the uh, We appreciate the that. I mean, that's that's seriously, thank you. Um, thank yeah, you so thank much, you. guys. Keep it keep it awkward, because, I mean, I, at, least <laughs> in, at least it lets us know that you know, you're watching. Um, but when it comes to... Uh, so how are you asking about the reputation you're talking about just as as the master or like outside of karate world anything that makes it known that like a anything where you're standing and people know you exist where do you stand on reputation like people a lot of people know me as much as a lot of people know you so people talk people share posts it's only a matter of time before a lot of people know what's without telling us so i'm saying wherever you go how do you walk like how do you like walk knowing your reputation do you walk cocky do you walk with morale do you walk humility humble i okay so talking about how i carry myself yes that's thank you that's the i word. try to i try to carry myself with confidence um you know certain certain days are better than others um so some days I might look more confident than others. I might, I might be happy some days. I might be smiling some days. I might just have the worst face in the world where it looks like I just don't want to be where I'm at. Doesn't mean that that's me totally, but um, as a whole, I try to keep myself composed in my own world because not because I'm trying to impress any specific people or well, I'm worried about me. it. Me. Only impress me. Huh? No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. So I. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I thought uh, that was a dare. No, um, no, no. Don't impress me. I was me. like, how do I do that? Not right um, now. I'm just kidding. So. Oof. <laughs> I'm sorry. Basically, I threw you it threw me completely off. I am so but sorry. But that's okay. Man. We're we're all human, right? Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> I'll do better next time. Build repetition in. So um, when it comes to reputation for me, it uh. As an overall, I just try to make sure that I'm composed. Um, yeah. Because we all have our ups and downs, our good days, bad days. Um, I, I try not to let anything specifically get to me. Because um, there's days where yeah. everything mm. could bother you. It could be anything. It could be personal life. It could be work. It could be... Drop coffee right on your shoe. It could be, <laughs> yeah, something that happened. It could be uh, weather. It could be anything, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything could come into play that could ruin your day. Um, maybe you didn't even sleep well. That could start it off, and then everything else just goes downhill. So reputation, especially when there's a lot that you had to build to create the person that you are known as. Um, honestly, I just want to say that I just try my best. Um, I'm human, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people recognize that, you know, like I said, no one's perfect, so we are all human, and there's there's flaws in everyone, but as an overall, I want to make sure that I, for the people that follow me, the people, for the kids that I teach, the adults that I teach, anyone that learns from me, I, I try to be a good example, no matter what. Um, I'm not the perfect example. There's always going to be better. I hope that they are better than I am one day. You know, that's every person's goal, at least as a teacher. But I, I want to make sure that they could, you know, not do wrong following in my footsteps in any sort of the way even if people just look up to me as a just a good person i don't want them to do something i do that maybe 
was considered bad, right? Let, let's just say hypothetically, I, I did something that wasn't technically correct, and then they do it, and they get in trouble for it. Mm, I don't want okay. them to look at me in a different light because they're like, well, I just did what he did because I look up to him, and now I'm getting in You're trouble not. for it because I was just looking up to a person that I look up to. You're not I, looking for a monkey see, monkey do? I always assume that there is a monkey see, monkey do. Okay. Um, gotcha. Because, like you said, you never know who's watching. Yeah. Um, I try to do a good example for others and myself because I what I do every day is I try to set myself a goal. It could be anything. And I try to reach that goal. doesn't mean I reach it. Most of the time, I actually don't. But you set your goals high, you will almost attain it or at least get somewhere closer than if you didn't have goals. So let's just say your goals were up here, pretty tall, pretty high. And you get up to here. Great. But now let's say your goals were here. You might meet them, but even if you meet them, you're not as high as you would have been right, if yeah. your goals were up yeah. here. Mm -hmm. So you would have exceeded your goals just by over, overthinking your goals, I guess, or or over. Um, I'm, I'm I'm trying to remember how to put this in words, but basically stacking up your goals really high and reaching for the stars. You're shooting for the stars and hope you hit the moon. Maybe you won't hit the moon, but you'll get a star. An instructor told me once. Um and if they're watching, I, uh, I appreciate this. He drilled it into my head. If it is to be, it's up to me. So yeah, that's why I was like, it's like, I think that matters with anything. If it is to be, mm -hmm. it's up to me. Wow, I sucked at that form. Well, oh well, I'm never good at karate. I give up. Well, that sucks. That's kind of a crappy mindset, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Just, oh, I really bombed that form. You know what? What can I do to get better? Now... I was want now you put this into consideration the repetition comes in and I've been seeing I saw it today it was on an advertisement for um, on Instagram mm -hmm. it was imagine taking t now taking the worst thoughts of your of yourself mm -hmm. put it on a piece of paper what you think about yourself the worst things possible do ahead go ahead now what's the best things about you what is the best things if now now maybe you don't know maybe now this is where the creativity starts here mm -hmm. we go. How can you build a reputation about yourself that's positive if you don't if you have so much of the negative? Well, let's get creative. Um, think of the things you enjoy doing. Think of your passions. Think of your hobbies. Think of your colors. Think of the type of personality you have. These are traits that can also alter into a personality that can become a better you. Like if you think that fishing can bring out your best personality, mm -hmm. okay, you're fishing. If you think that wearing green is going to make you feel great every single day, go crazy. If you think that wearing that, that, that skirt is going to make you look beautiful and if you want to wear it all week, go ahead, do it. Who cares? Just take all the bad, put it on paper, and now write the positive things about you or like the things you do. And now also add stuff to it. Like today I'm going to go for a walk. So, okay likes exercise okay mm -hmm. see what you're doing you're building a little resume on yourself as time goes on building that repetition on what you could do every day the things that you could be doing later down in the future and you're going to be building not just like this you're you're kind of like crafting a very long sculpture of yourself if anything mm -hmm. so all those little negative things of it's like ah oh, man this picture looks like crap I gotta take some of this stuff off. So you're working, you're working, you're hard work, you're repeating every day. You wake up, you do it again. You wake up, you do it again. You wake up, you do it again. And sooner or later, now you're, you have so much things written down on this piece of positive paper that you gotta get stacks more. What I'm saying is you build a better reputation by getting better at, uh, in my opinion, the reason I was putting these two together, you build a better reputation by having a better repetition. I can't explain how that works in the best sense but this is what i mean and hear me out guys because mm -hmm. i was thinking about this to <laughs> explain it for the last 24 hours okay i don't have the i never i'm gonna be honest there's some things that i've done that did not give me the best reputation okay i'm gonna take ownership of that okay not so happy about that mm -hmm. what can i do to better myself okay um i can do the one thing that i need to do more and i'm gonna be honest with everybody is uh Reaching out to people, reaching, replying to people, responding back to messages. Mm -hmm. I am not good at that. I'm just, I, I sometimes, and I do this to my buddy right here, and I feel bad about well, doing I it. Well, I do it as well, so I mean, we're okay. both guilty. 
<laughs> okay, but hear me out. I look at the phone, and I see it, and I do this. And you... I put it down, yeah. and I go, I'll get back to that. But I forget, and I say, you know what I need to do? I need to build a repetition. I actually need to start replying. I replied, and after, you know, after a few, you've seen it today. I've been replying a little bit more. Yeah. I've been trying to, like, have a little bit faster response. Not only is that going to help me reply on time, but think about it like this. It's a subliminal message that I think brings us into work-related things and martial arts-related things. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, if you feel, you have to have some obligation in life to where, because you can't have a friend and feel obligated and be like, oh, I have this obligation where I feel like I have to talk to my friend. First off, they're your friends. You're there for your, you're there for each other. Yep. Same thing as a martial arts instructor. They're there as an obligate, like on, on their own terms, to, to teach you. They have that repetition of showing up at that time, answering the calls, doing what they have to do. Everything from a simple reply can be as easy as getting up in the morning and starting your coffee. It's just repetition. Yep. So that's why I think your best reputation is from your repetition. So try to work on that. I mean, do, uh, how's your reputation going? <laughs> reputation? Uh, I, hopefully good. I think yeah. so far so good. Okay. And um, I hope that uh, what we're doing right now, I hope that it helps on top of it because – what I find doing these uh, podcasts is, um, and I'm not sure if anyone else is like this, but sometimes speaking things and telling stories and giving out opinions uh, in this sense of, you know, speaking. It can be a little nervous. Um, it can be a little nervous, but it also <sighs> kind of makes you realize a lot about yourself. And that's what I've been noticing about me doing these podcasts. And... Uh, I noticed that um, David here has also been opening up. I've been opening up because there's stuff I said here that I didn't say m most places, or if I did, it's mainly my close friends. Yeah, but so it's not that it's bad. You know, it's actually a good thing. You know, it's just yeah, we were gonna say being an open book um, because this is an open discussion. This is literally opinion, so this is how I feel, um, which is great, um, and it actually feels good. It's almost like therapeutic, I think. <laughs> Coming for an hour, once a week, cup of coffee. What could be better? Cup we're just of coffee and yeah. talking. Seriously, we're just what's hanging on out. Your mind. <laughs> Let's talk. That's what it is. So, y'all can come hear us vent if we have if we have a time to do that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I uh, know. Oh honestly, yeah. Um, yeah. My uh, reputation is important, and so is repetition. So, basically, uh, one helps the other. Mainly, repetition helps the reputation. There was, uh, and and for all you, um, I have to get. I ha uh, someone told me to bring this up, and I'm going to only do it to as a benefit. Okay. For um, reputation, for you uh, young kids out there that are getting in relationships, please um, treat each other with respect, okay? Let's, let's try to do that. Let's make sure that we're... Uh, <laughs> and, and even adults, man, what are you doing? You're not making us look good either. Not setting a bad reputation here. I'm, I'm hearing a lot of uh, bad stories about people hurting each other behind each other's backs. I'm assuming this must have been happening. It has somewhere. been. I've been hearing stories, and people are just asking me if I could deliver the message anonymously. Okay. That's good. So That's good. I, it's, it's just an anonymous message. Look, it just treat your other half right. If you don't want to be a part of it, just bail. There, there's, there's, there's no sense of stacking that type of, like, like a drama. You don't need it. So just Agreed. Bail out on that, all right? Anyway, mm -hmm. enough of that said. <laughs> but, oh, oh, Moving that's on. that move. That, yeah, because I was going to say, um, I thought there was something else, and there was. And what was the question? Okay, so from one of our viewers, um, one person asked, and I want to make sure I word this correctly. Um, if, if this isn't generalized, but it was asked to me, but it was to us. If we were to have an offspring, a son, a daughter, um, and they were to do martial arts. Not us. Not us together, offspring. Yeah. So if I was to have Some, an offspring, he was supposed to have a People are. He was supposed to have somebody an asked if we were. No, 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 no we're not. <laughs> we're best friends. Um, we're brothers, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's just keep it that way. So if I was to have a kid and David was to have a kid and they wanted to do martial arts or we were to put our children in martial arts would we want them in the same style that we learned 
That's the question. Mm. And I think good that's question. a good question because that's something that was never asked. Something I never thought about. I assumed the answer, but I never talked about it to myself, nor did I think about it. So, um, my opinion on it is if I was to have a son or daughter and they wanted to practice martial arts, it would be biased if I was to say, yes, I would want them to do the same style. Um, but it would also make sense because I'm knowledgeable in it. And if they needed someone to help them through it, I would be there to you know, guide them. Or, mm -hmm. or who knows, I may be their teacher in general. So inside of karate, outside of karate, I could still help them practice 24-7, 365 if they wanted to. So I feel like they would be able to excel very well in the style that I know because I could help them through it as well. And I don't plan on stopping anyway, so hopefully I would be up to date on what's current. Um, on the flip side of that, I would also not be against them doing any other style either because me personally, I'm also um, open to different styles and I really want to learn other ones. I've done jujitsu a little bit and I wanted to, you know, get my black belt in that, but I did not exceed it just yet. I didn't, I didn't meet that mark. Um, I've also done um, or touched on Krav Maga at one point with yours truly here. Um, so if they wanted to take any specific style and it wasn't mine, um, I'd be happy. I'd be like, go for it. I really hope you do well. I, I'm going to learn by watching you. And then we're going to have our own two things that we could put together. Hmm. When, like that. Yeah, so if, let's just say, my offspring wanted to learn Kung Fu, I do Teng Sudo. They get their black belt eventually. I, I watch them, you know, I, I'm raising them as they're learning this style. And I'm learning so much just by being interested. I was like, wow, this is so cool. And then maybe one day they uh, they say, hey, Dad, um, can you it's teach so me some? I hearing that. I, I, yeah, it sounded so weird. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm just saying it felt weird. Oh, Ooh. boy. Um, so let's just say they, they asked me, they're like, hey, can you teach me some of your style? I'd be like, yeah, of course. And the cool thing about it is I could say, hey, can you teach me something as well? Yeah, that's cool. How yeah. about we trade information here? I want to know how you do a kick, and I'll teach you one of my kicks. I want to know how you would um, – what's your technique on throwing a punch? And I'll show you how I traditionally would throw mine. And then you get this combined force, and, you know, you're sharing and, and – sharing's caring. But you're sharing, and, and you're, um, you're helping each other. So it, it's good both ways, in my opinion. I would love them to be – whatever they want and i know that's what you know most parents would say anyway but um when it comes to that specific question yes i i would like either way. if they wanted to just stick with one style go ahead i would encourage them to do multiple or just be open-minded but if they wanted to stick with one and master it because you kind of focus just on one specific style that's good too i i don't feel like there's a bad thing or um a negative thing just by doing one or multiple styles i yeah. think it's a benefit regardless I like that answer, and I think that was a good answer. Um, what I get, definitely can say from this is I don't mind what my what my kid wants to do. If it, if my kid wants to go do tai chi, go ahead. Uh -huh. Go go ahead. You might learn something that might benefit me, you in whatever setting of life you do more than my setting of life. Mm -hmm. I think it really matters on like perfect like like literal like position of life and what you're doing like. When I was in high school, I mean, it was a little tougher, and my opinion, this is my opinion, it was a little rougher, a little setting was a little different. I didn't really have the confidence, I wasn't even like my, I wasn't even a black belt yet at Tang Sado, and mm -hmm. even though I was learning forms, I felt like my self-defense still wasn't there, so as a kid, I'm practicing Krav Maga, I felt, because I'm learning two different styles at once, I felt the control with Tang Sado and the confidence with Krav Maga. Knowing at least if I did have to get into a fight and if I did have to hit the person, at least I'd have control behind it and not death. Mm -hmm. So like that's why I think the two work together. So in, I think all martial arts is great for anybody. Or for if, there's no wrong choice. I don't think in my opinion. I don't believe there's wrong choice either. So if my kid wants to go join Tang Sudo, perfect. Go ahead. I'm with you on that. If you want to do Krav Maga, okay, I'm still with you on that. At the end of the day, it's like you said, we can share information on what we learn, discover yep. new things. Hey, how did you block? I mean, for Krav Maga, it's, it's a very brutal art. It's, it, it's it, For the people that don't know, Krav Maga is the Batman martial art. It is designed to harm your opponent as quickly and physically as possible. All right? Or efficiently, not physically. Quickly and efficiently as possible. 
And, and make sure they don't get up. Yeah, make sure you don't give up. You want to get out of the fight at least less than seven seconds. Like, that's the goal thing. So you can imagine how much damage is being drawn. So I think that with that kind of style, it's brutal, but there's not much of the kickback on the self-defense where it's like, hey, leave me alone. But that's where the Tang so is. Come on, let's yeah. let's keep the peace. Let's keep the peace. Anybody wants to keep the peace, but Krav Maga delivers more of a, in my opinion, other peaceful <laughs> scenario. But they both work, and that's why I think mm -hmm. you got your yin and yang. You got your Tang Soo and Krav Maga. That's yeah. my yin yang. So if my kid wants to go Taekwondo, go ahead. I'm, st I'm still with you. As long as you're doing something that's going to benefit you and what was the sign that my black belt oh, my old school said that will develop your physical growth and mental health mm -hmm. as long as it does that that, that and I'm for it yep so yep. I almost said son like I'm already having a kid <laughs> I hate that speaking it into existence one day one day one day and also just to add to that question and answer it even if it wasn't martial arts at all and they just had something that they wanted to be interested in I would just be open minded yeah to seriously it. we'd be for it absolutely I, w I would encourage it because there's so many things that people could do nowadays. There's positive and negatives. Obviously, if it's negative, I'm not going to encourage it. But um, there's so many things that could be bad. And if there's one positive thing that they're interested in and they really want to get into it and, and really dive in and, and learn it and, and study it, I would have no reason to say no. It's like it's a craft. It's It's something that... I mean, who doesn't want their kid to be interested in something that's going to benefit them? If it looks, if it looks like pretty beneficial for the for the kid, I mean, why not do it? I mean, if it yeah. looks like it's going to be an outcome, I think. I mean, honestly, realistically, if your kid is super happy, but you're drilling this mindset into them where it's like not making them happy, then it's just like, yeah, you don't, you never know. I mean, in my beginnings, sorry, mom and dad, love you, but I don't think they believed in the YouTube life in the beginning, and well. To be honest, I mean, not to cut you off. No, you're good. YouTube, when I was really young, honestly, I didn't even know about it until I was like eight. <laughs> but when I heard about it, I was like, okay, that's, um, I'm trying to do an example. That's like, uh, you know how there was the websites where it was just pictures? And that's, then people that's... used to just post pictures? It was just like a site where they post pictures? Yeah. I'm not trying what, to like say. Like GIF Hub or something like that? It was like. Not Tumblr, but it was like one of those things. MySpace? Not MySpace, because it wasn't Facebook or anything like that, but there was websites out there that were just basically like... Somebody will tell us. Please, comment Yeah, section. yeah. They're, from at that time when YouTube first started, there was millennials. a few different things. Gen, gen, <laughs> millen, who's, who's before the I'm not even going to quote it because I'm going to make myself sound stupid. Millennials. Um, the boomers. people that are in their 20s. <laughs> we're millennials, and I think people below uh, above us are boomers. That's what I think. Okay, so basically, around that time <laughs> when YouTube first came out, yeah, I didn't really know about it. It was just a place to post videos. That's the way I thought about it. And I was like, that's cool, because that didn't exist. But who would have thought? Who would have thought? I don't even think the person who created YouTube thought that it was going to turn into what it is now. Probably not. There's, there's <laughs> movies and TV shows that are made by YouTube. Not just videos that people are posting, but it's actually productions, like... It's crazy. So, I mean, yeah. I don't even know why we got into the subject. I kind of blanked just, out for a second. I'm no, sorry. I think uh, that was perfect. I just kind of crossed into the next piece. Mm. Which, by the way, guys, if you would disagree with us or have your own opinion, like the person who, like, or people like awkwardly walked up to, to like, my buddy right here and just said, hey, you know, I do feel when I get sick. Can <laughs> See, we, it just not only we appreciate that, by the way, but it just gives us a sense of like, wow, you actually did watch it, and at least you told us your opinion. All right. Yeah, it feels very, it's, it's very nice. Yeah, we appreciate nice, all actually. the disagreements and all the feedback you can give us. Just please be, um, just don't say any mean things. Please, respect, love. Constructive criticism is fine. That would be great. We would totally um, take your feedback. Just nothing, you know, like, oh, you guys suck. Oh, well, I mean. That doesn't help me at all. They're going to say it now, man. They're going to be like, they're going to say it just to get just an, I mean, there's worse things people could say, but just as an example, just please do constructive, cri <laughs> constructive <laughs> criticism if there is any. Gotcha. And like I said, if, if in many podcasts that we have done already, the ones that we have done, if there's anything you want us to tailor towards, just let us know. 
where it's like, oh, well, these guys only talk about this. I would rather hear this. Just let us know. Yeah, tell us. Like... Because I'm more than willing to do anything at this point. And I want you guys to be happy because you guys are obviously watching, and I we appreciate that very much. So we want to make you guys happy because you're our, our viewers. So let us know. Um, martial artists, like I said, let us know if you want us to continue that because we want to know how many of you guys are actually watching. Um, because I really don't know, and I really hope you guys are watching. Uh, otherwise, gamers... Uh, just random people that are watching YouTube, listening to podcasts. Um, tell us what you what you think. You know, we really want to um, make sure that this continues, and we would like to answer you guys' questions. Yeah, we'll keep going until like we're we're just we'll just keep going. We're just gonna keep going because <laughs> why not? Uh, yeah, because honestly, I made when I started YouTube ten years ago, I kept going even through high school. And sure, I was lazy, but after I had graduated, picked it back up, and I'm pushing forward. We got 50k behind us. We're gonna make things happen, guys. Seriously, for anybody, I'm, I'll I'll keep I'll keep telling my people to come through. But you guys, if you know anybody that's interested in this or even made it to the end, yeah. matter of fact, I'm even gonna say say the be real. Hey, who you you got interrupted by us? This is a be real. Don't swipe yet. Please tune into Let's Talk 12:30 p.m. on Sundays. We just talk about anything of that topic of discussion. So seriously, it's your guys' choice in this ne upcoming episode of what you guys want to see. So let us know, please. please. All right? We would appreciate that. And then I'll just cut that and edit that part out. <laughs> <laughs> but <clears throat> what this whole podcast really today was just mainly, if you got a goal, set for it, go for it. Think of the worst things that, that can go wrong. What the worst things that can go wrong. Now, don't let that happen. Okay, because if it is to be, it's up to me. Quote that. All right, um, I can't, I can't stress that enough. Build your reputation. Have a, have a good sense of morale. No, do the right thing. No right, no wrong. Like it's logical. You know what I mean? Like if you think that that if you think for a second you might get in trouble, chances are you might actually get in trouble. So don't. So do don't it. do it. Yeah, yeah, don't do it. And you want to build that repetition. Like it's easy as saying no. All right? It's a universal word, so say no. All right? So just wake up, have your cup of coffee, rinse and repeat. All right? It's literally just that simple. That's my that's my conclusion. I don't know if you have anything to say on that. He claps just, his hands. That's <laughs> uh, that's in full agreement. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, yeah. Um, I don't really have much to add to what you said. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you, you talked more in this episode, which is great. I did talk um, more in this episode. Also, it was his subjects this week, so um, understandable. <laughs> uh, <laughs> which I'm, I wish I could have added more, but I hope that, you know, what was said um, still uh, added. I to touched this. your shoe. I'm sorry. That's okay. okay. It's okay. You're really matching with the maroon, my guy. I really need to wash my shoes. You need to wash them? I have yeah, stuff I got you the, can. The matching shoe. Oh, I can't even see it. Wow, where are they? You lift up the lift uh, up that light. Where are we going? This way. Um, oh, the audio is. People are so confused. Uh, there you go. He's matching lifting, shoes. He's lifting up his leg. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But that's what he was bringing up. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think that's. A, I think that. Yeah, that literally wraps everything up for today. Listen, guys, there was supposed to be a surprise for this episode, but as I said in that last one, it might not have happened in this one. So. That's okay. Instagram account happening. Um, hopefully it's up by today's podcast. If it's not, we'll get it up by the next one. Just uh, we'll get we'll let you guys know. I'll let you guys know on my end. Please go follow this dude's social media. Please, please. If you don't see mine, you're probably gonna see his. Let's. Can we please just come together and like make this a thing where we all come together and just enjoy life here all right why not like, come on let's do it's it it's a safe place yeah yes it's a <laughs> safe place so look at anything goes opinions are all here on the table give us your best feedback thank you for tuning in to episode four of uh, episode three three episode three wow we're i actually ahead of ourselves That's we okay. got it too excited but uh be in tune for a surprise next week if it comes in um that's all I got. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We out. See you later.